Here we have a very large non-conducting slab with positive charges. The slab is drawn edge on, so it is perpendicular to the screen. The left surface of the slab is at x equals to negative a, and the right surface is at x equals to a. So the thickness of the slab is 2a. The volume charge density rho within the slab is a positive constant b times the absolute value of x. And there is no charge outside the slab. So although the slab does not have uniform charge density because rho depends on x, the charges are symmetric left and right about the plane x equals to zero. For example, the charge density at x equals to negative half a is the same as the charge density at x equals to positive half a. Find the electric field as a function of x inside the slab and the electric field outside the slab, but close enough to the slab to still be able to consider the slab as very large. There is planar symmetry, so we can use Gauss's law to find the fields. Again, when we use Gauss's law to find the electric field, we need to make a Gaussian surface that goes through the location we are interested in. And we need the electric field and the cosine to be constant so we can take them out of the integral. What Gaussian surface should we make? For planar symmetry, we can make prism shapes like any of these. For convenience, I would make a cylinder that goes through the point we're interested in. And I can either make a cylinder like this or a longer one extending to both sides symmetrically. For now, let's use this shorter cylinder. Which part of this Gaussian surface has non-zero flux? By symmetry, there is no electric field at x equals to zero, so there is no flux through the left end of the cylinder. There is no flux through the curved part of the cylinder either. Because the electric field on the right side of the x equals to zero plane, produced by these positive charges with planar symmetry, is in the positive x direction, so no field lines go through the curved part of the cylinder. Therefore, the only part of the Gaussian surface with non-zero flux is the right end of the cylinder. By symmetry, everywhere on the right end, the electric field has the same magnitude, so E can be taken out of the integral. And everywhere on the right end, the electric field goes to the right, and the outward normal vector dA also goes to the right. So the angle between E and the dA is 0 degrees, and the cosine 0 is 1, which can be taken out of the integral. The angle between E and the dA would be 0 degrees when the enclosed charge is positive. The angle would be 180 degrees if the enclosed charge is negative, because if the charges are positive, the electric field would go out of the positive charge. If the charges are negative, the electric field will go into the negative charge. Either way, we can take the cosine out of the integral. So the flux through the Gaussian surface is E times 1 times the integral of dA for the right end of the cylinder, which we can just say is A. This A is the cross-sectional area of the Gaussian surface. Since it is arbitrary, we should expect the A to cancel and not affect our answer for the electric field. And the flux equals to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. How much enclosed charge can we find inside this Gaussian surface? Since we have the volume charge density rho, we would multiply rho by the volume that has the charge and uh, is inside the Gaussian surface. Although this row is not a uniform density for the entire volume.
So we have to chop all this volume into little pieces of volume, D volume, multiply by row, and then add them together to integrate. To make use of the planar symmetry, we would chop the volume into extremely thin layers of disks. Within an extremely thin slice of circular disk, x is almost a constant. So the volume charge density rho is almost a constant. So we can multiply rho by d volume to get the charge within an extremely thin slice of disk. We can then integrate the charge of each slice to get the total enclosed charge. So we can plug in rho is b times the absolute value of x, and we have d volume over here. Since this part is a function of x, but we have d volume over here, we should hope to rewrite d volume into something dx. d volume is the volume of an extremely thin layer of disk which is the cross-sectional area A times the thickness, of, and the thickness of this extremely thin layer is dx. So the volume is the cross-sectional area A times the thickness dx. So this here becomes the integral of B times the absolute value of x, since uh, the Gaussian surface is on the positive side of the x-axis. So the absolute value x is x. And then the d volume is a times dx. b and a are constants we can take out of the integral. When we integrate x to the first degree, we get x squared, and then we have to multiply by 1 over 2. And then what do we do? Do we do plus c or do the bounce? Since we have to add up all the charges from the leftmost layer to the rightmost layer, we're going to do the bounce. So our bounce are from x equals to 0 to the rightmost layer is at x equals to x. And this will give us uh, ba times x squared divided by 2 when we plug in x equals to x minus what we get when we plug in x equals to 0, which is 0. So this is our q enclosed. And then the arbitrary cross-sectional area A can be canceled, and we can find the electric field E to be B times x squared divided by 2 epsilon naught. Had we chosen this longer cylinder, we would have non-zero fluxes through both ends of the cylinder. So the flux part would equal to E times 1 times 2 ends of the cylinder, so twice the cross-sectional area. And that equals to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. And for Q enclosed, because it's a symmetric left and right, so this twice as long cylinder would enclose twice as the charge enclosed by one side. Therefore, the enclosed charge is twice as much as this one, which is b times a times x squared. And again, this arbitrary cross-sectional area can cancel, and we will get e equals to bx squared over 2 epsilon naught. And when we use two different methods correctly, of course, we should expect to get exactly the same answer. Now let's find the electric field outside the slab for x is bigger than a. For the same kind of symmetry, we would still make the same shape Gaussian surface. This one's left end still goes through the origin, but the right end has to go through this point we're interested in. We would still use Gauss's law, and we would still have non-zero flux only on the right end. So this side will give us E times 1 times A, and what's different is the enclosed charge is different. To find the Q enclosed, 
we would still have to integrate rho times the volume. For the part of the volume that has charge and is inside the Gaussian surface. This would only include the, the volume that is between x equals to zero and x equals to little a because there is no charge over here. So the Q enclosed would still be b times a times one half x squared, but we will have different bounds. We will go integrate from x equals to zero to x equals to little a, which will give us b times a times, when we plug in the x equals to little a, we get this minus what we get when we plug in the zero, which is zero. So our Q enclosed is b times big A times little a squared divided by two. And uh, this cross-sectional area A, that's the arbitrary one we chose. And so this cancels and we get electric field. That is b times little a squared divided by two epsilon naught. Notice how this electric field does not depend on x, meaning the electric field is uniform outside the slab. As long as the slab can be considered as very large, meaning the distance to the slab is much, much smaller compared to the size of the slab. And the field on the left side will be uniform as well, and the field on the left side will go to the left, and it will be the same magnitude.